Hi, I'm Eva Murphy from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and this is my Leave Insert Maths Grinds channel. I'll regularly add new videos for both higher and ordinary level maths, so make sure you subscribe below and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. Okay, I want to go through now injective, surjective and bijective functions and, and I suppose to try and wrap our heads around what does it mean. So these are all the different types of functions you can have. Okay, now what I probably should have done before I did this was to talk a little bit about what a function actually is. Okay, and then what's called the, the vertical line test. So if I draw a quadratic function, for example, that you all know, okay, you know this is called a quadratic function, um, nothing special about it. I could draw another type of function over here called a linear function. Okay, so for this one, ax squared plus bx plus c, for this one, ax plus b, okay, is a linear function. We have exponential functions, we have cubic functions, we have, uh, and so on and so forth, okay? So there's loads of them. So why are these functions? Okay, well, you can do what's called a vertical line test to prove that these are functions, okay? And when you do a vertical line test, and a vertical line test means that you draw a vertical line up through your function. And if that vertical line that you draw intersects your, your graph or your function at most once, okay? Now remember, hear what I'm saying, at most once, then that graph represents a function. Okay, or is a function. Okay, and you should be able to draw that line anywhere along that x axis. So, for any input, this is our input axis, our x values. Okay, and our y's are our output values. Okay, and that's always the case in functions, any, any part of the functions chapter. Okay, so for any input x, I can draw a vertical line and it only intersects the graph at most once, then we consider that a function, okay? And you can see on, on a line, only intersects at most once, okay? So then you might ask me, well, what is not a function, okay? Or what does, what does something that, um, yeah, what does it look like when you don't have a function? Okay, so let me again draw in some graphs. So there's two off my head that I can think of. That's one. That's another. So this is what we would think of as, as not a function, okay? So again, why? And, and if you get asked this in a Leave Insert exam, you show that it's not a function using the vertical line test. So you take a value of X and you show that it fails the vertical line test, okay? It should only intersect the graph at most once. It intersects here and it intersects here. Okay, so because it intersects more than once, it is not considered a function. Okay, and it's the same for a circle. Again, there are values along that where it um, fails the vertical line test. So therefore is considered not a function. Okay, and in, in an exam, in, in a test where you were examining this type of question, um, if, if I were to examine it, I would draw a graph something like this. Okay, sorry, I used the line. Okay, and I would ask you, is that a function? And under 
And if not, under what values is it not a function? Okay, or I would ask you to, to, to limit the domain where it, it could be considered a function. So in other words, what am I asking there? Well, between this value and this value, it fails the vertical line test. Okay, but if you could limit your inputs or your domain to be any value greater than this number or any value less than this number here, then it wouldn't fail the vertical line test. Okay, now, I don't think you'd get asked something like that, but you are sometimes asked under what conditions could a function be, co be called something else. So in other words, you'll see much more of this in injective, surjective, bijective, when we go on to types of functions, you might be asked under what conditions is the function injective, for example. Okay, so all I'm saying here is see that it's only between these two values that it fails the vertical line test. Okay, so if you have values on your x-axis, you can say between this and this, it fails the vertical line test. Okay, so they are examples of function, or examples of, I suppose, graphs that are not functions. Okay, so once you have established that it is a function, using the vertical line test, you may then be asked, well, what type of function is it? And the answer to that is either injective, surjective, bijective, okay? Or is it one of these? Okay, these are the main types and they're the ones that's on the leave insert course. So I've taken these again from the project maths book, but I also have them from revise wise. So I'm just going to go through the two definitions um, of of all the different types of functions. So injective first, a function f is said to be injective from x to y if every element in y has at most one element in x. Okay, an injective function is often called a one-to-one -one mapping. Okay, so if every element in y has at most one element in x. Okay, bear with me for a second while I go on to revise wise, because one of these definitions will make more sense in your head and it's different for every person. So injective, no two inputs have the same output. No two inputs have the same output. Okay, not necessary that every output in the codomain has a corresponding input in the domain. Okay, so it's not essential that every output has an input. What's important though, is that no two inputs have the same output. Okay, that is an injective function. Okay, how do we do, how do we show that something, it's actually written there, how do we show that something is injective? You do a horizontal line test and you show that it intersects the graph of the function at most once. Okay, so again, let's draw one or two of these and let's see if we can wrap our head around it, okay? So let's start with our quadratic again. Okay, a horizontal line test, okay? So remember the vertical one is to prove that it's a function. The horizontal one is to test what type of function is it. Okay, so horizontal, let me draw a horizontal um, line through this function. Okay, so the horizontal line test intersects the graph of the function at most once. So straight away, you can see that this is not an injective function because it has intersected the graph at that, you know, at those two x values, whatever they are, twice. Okay, so an example of an injective function would be um, a straight line, for example. Okay, let me draw that for you. So if I drew into this the straight line, then no matter where I draw my horizontal line test, I am going to intersect that graph 
at most once. Okay, so that is an injective function. Okay, surjective then. A function f is said to be surjective from x to y if every element in y has at least one matching element in x. A surjective function is often called a many to one or onto map. On a coordinated graph, a horizontal line can intersect the curve at least once. Okay, so let's have a look at the other definition. Surjective, every output is possible. No output is left unused. The range and the codomain are equal. Okay, um, wait for me for one sec now, and I'm going to give you I am going to give you the, the, the definitions, if I have them here. Yes. So the domain is the set of input values. OK, so your domain is your input values, would be there in a function. Your range is the set of output values. And the one we don't hear about too much is this codomain. And codomain is the set of all possible output values. OK, so if you think about a surjective function, because every possible output needs to have an input, OK, every output is possible, then that is why your range, which is your outputs, and your codomain, which is your set of all possible outputs, are equal. OK, so again, I hope that makes sense. An example of a surjective function is also a straight line, because if you think about a straight line, it goes on forever. OK, so I could project this line all the way down and up. These are all my, this is my codomain, all possible outputs. OK, and every possible output, no matter where I do that horizontal line test, I will hit my line graph. OK, you can also have other cases where, for example, I'm going to draw an exponential function here now. As such. OK, if you limit your range, if you limit your output, OK, and if I said my output, which is y, um, was greater than zero, for example, then my graph could be surjective. OK, so have a look at the range that's specified for that function. And over that specific range, your function might be surjective. OK, so this line could go on like such. So therefore, as long as my outputs are positive, I will have a um, it, the graph will be surjective, OK? It will pass the horizontal line test. So that's surjective. It might just be surjective over part of the range. It might not be for every real number. So that's injective and surjective. Now, the last one then is bijective. And a function is said to be bijective if it is both injective and surjective. So it's the perfect one-to-one -one correspondence between the elements of x and the elements of y. So remember what injective was? Every input had at most one output. Remember what surjective was? Every output had an input. OK, so bijective, it is both injective and surjective. So it's the perfect one-to-one. -one. And the the perfect example of a bijective function is, of course, the line, OK, because that is both injective and surjective. And it's why I used it for the um, for the example for both. So then the revise wise description, each input has a unique output, both injective and surjective. 
okay? A function has an inverse if and only if it is bijective, okay? And I'll come back to that um, in a few minutes when we look at inverse functions. So that is bijective. So to show something is bijective, you're showing that it's both injective and surjective first. If you've enjoyed this video, then why not join us in IT Sligo and use maths in practice? In conjunction with industry, we've designed an exciting new program in electronics and self-driving technologies, which uses cutting edge techniques such as artificial intelligence, computer vision and virtual and augmented reality. You'll need a H5 in maths to qualify. Check out the link below.